information that I got, dude was asked to leave because he was a snitch. And then he came back and she intentionally shot him. Now, if all of these accusations is true, and this guy was literally a snitch, then it also makes everything we said true. The government killed Nipsey Hussle. It's something that y'all don't understand what Nipsey was doing. Y'all don't understand what he was doing outside of this. Y'all only know the industry level of this shit. Y'all don't understand the role that Nipsey Hussle plays in my community. You don't understand it. Y'all know industry level. Nipsey Hussle, the rapper, but he's married to Lauren London. Uh, Y'all don't understand what he's doing for my community. According to my sources, the rapper was talking about the OG Blood member from across the town of Inglewood by the name of OG Firebug. Tennille's Park family, and he had just come home from doing 10 plus years in the P now. Word around is homie is not to be played with. So according to the story, the two are known to be strong enemies from previous beef between the blue and red side. Somehow, someway, the two ran into each other this past Saturday. The OG from Inglewood walked into a restaurant and Nipsey had his back towards the OG, but he was unaware of him. He had to tap Nipsey to get past him, and once he tapped Nipsey, they both went into defensive mode. They both spoke while Nipsey defused the situation and said he wanted to talk to the OG a little bit longer. The two sat down and Nipsey told Firebug his vision. He wanted all of the high-ranking gang members to sit down and peace out the horrible energy between the sets. This makes sense because Nipsey was going to meet with the police board on Monday. Blee, you know Nipsey been the middleman from the jump. Blee, you know this. Blee, we grew up together. Nipsey been the middleman from the jump. Nipsey brought the hoods together from the beginning. Y'all niggas talking about Dr. Sebi. Y'all, man, fuck all of that. I don't care about no Dr. Sebi DVD. I don't care about no property investment. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing that's going on. This man was helping bring the grapes and the bunny hunters and the Circle City Pyrus and everybody in Watts together. Well, I don't give a fuck about no Dr. Sebi. I don't give a fuck about none of y'all bunk ass conspiracy. That ain't got nothing to do with what's happening. Y'all don't understand what's happening when these cameras is off. Bro, this man rode the train with the homies. How do you ride a train all the way to wherever with a train full of grapes the very next day go to the Nickerson Gardens, sign Killer Twine, dog. Like, this shit way, it's way bigger than what y'all understand, bro. This ain't got nothing to do with no Dr. Sebi. This ain't got nothing to do with none of that. This shit bigger than all of that, bro. It's bigger than all of that. They don't want Watts to get together, bro. And I'm gonna tell y'all why they don't want Watts to get together. Because Watts is a project. It is the last of us. The people in Watts is a special form of people. This is what y'all don't understand, dog. It's called the projects for a reason. The people that is in Watts is a special form of people. And there's an epic plot to keep these people oppressed. Are you uh, familiar with this shit? You ever watched the movie Immortals? You know them black niggas that was locked up at the bottom? That's Watts. It's an epic plot to keep these people in Watts. Oppressed, bro, and Nipsey was trying to merge both worlds just as well as he's been doing since we was kids, bro. This is what y'all not understand. Nipsey signed a bunny hunter 
y'all y'all so with celebrity world industry niggas and rap fans y'all probably don't even know what bonnie hunters is he signed a bonnie hunter so i don't even think 60s and bonnie hunters get along he signed a bonnie hunter to a fucking he signed a blood to a crip label and then merge the bloods with the other enemy hoods that they've been this shit bigger than all of that bro y'all don't really understand what's going on my nigga y'all don't like because the problem with these outside and that's why i'm saying look let me tell you something i'm gonna say this shit loud and clear right and i don't care Look, I think I'm about to spaz, bro. Can you count, suckers? I say the future is ours. If you can count. Shit y'all be on, huh? How we gonna be sad and crying now? This the shit y'all be on. This the shit y'all glorify. This the shit they put in the air. You got the dumbass nigga. What's his name? Young Melly. He killed both of his best friends. He on every website cover and all type of shit. This shit that made him famous. This the shit we be on, huh? This is not hood, this is not gang related. The media is going to put it as gang related because they think when two black men from gangs beef, this is war. It's not. This gang related crimes are niggas from two different hoods. This is a person from the hood. So if this is a person who cooperated with police, 
then he's a person that has been talking to police from the beginning. And in order for a person to come over there, let me tell you something. When you from a hood and the scenario play out like this, you know what you do? You catch the fade. If he's a snitch and Nipsey Hussle told him, you can't be around here because you a snitch. According to homeboy and hood rules, you catch the fade. If, if if we are homeboys from the same hood and you tell me I can't be somewhere, I'm going to tell you, move me then, nigga. Then we going to run the fade. That's how the hood work when you homeboys. But if somebody tell you, not just somebody, this is Nipsey Hussle, a person who stands for peace. If somebody tell you you can't be around here. You leave and come back and intentionally kill him because he said you can't be around here. This is a paid job. Oh, for real. But we had a talk with Mark Echo. And Mark Echo, you know, it was like, bro, the, the magazine has its own opinion. I give the magazine its autonomy. I don't I don't get in between that. But we just had a real convo. And halfway through the convo, he was like, uh, I started talking about my idea for my marathon stores. And I was like, I want to create a retail network. I want to have 10 stores in America. I want to be able to drop my albums to my own stores, charge whatever I want. You know, uh, like Apple. Apple got 100% vertical integration. They they control the aesthetic of the store, operating system, the product, the whole shit. So he was like, um, he kind of shitted on my idea. Like, fuck, fuck brick and mortar. Think about e-commerce. And by the way, check out Bitcoin. Embarrass us? I'm not trying to embarrass y'all. What I'm trying to say to y'all is... This industry of what I'm trying to get into Ain't nobody never broke down Ain't nobody broke down We all slaves So I ain't trying to disrespect you on your show We all slaves or something about my show, yeah. I ain't trying to disrespect you, period Let okay. me talk if you're gonna have me talk We all slaves We all slaves And y'all ain't experienced nothing This means no, We're gonna go into a, a larger conspiracy theory this means, I mean, we all know what jail is. We all know what jail do, right? right? I keep telling y'all, I got a lot of big homies where I honestly believe that these niggas are FBI. I got a lot of homies in my neighborhood that's big homies that's still telling young niggas to do fucked up shit. And I question what happened to these niggas while they was in jail, because they did some years. So I question what happened to these niggas. In this one, you gotta get deep into MK Ultra. You gotta get deep into mind control. You gotta get deep into consciousness switch. You gotta get deep into all that. Speech and environment back to this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's interesting too that he talked about that. Obviously, with the the movie being out, were you um surprised as having that connection to Africa? How much you saw the passion behind the movie Black Panther, or was that something you expected? I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that. This was a unique moment, you know, in Hollywood and film and art. So I just went to go watch it. I didn't really watch the previews. I'm not really up on the Black Panther story like that as far as the Marvel side. And I was like, you know, I was like, I ain't know. I was blown away for real when I watched it. And I said this yesterday, you know, the most powerful line in the movie is when Michael B. Jordan chose not to be saved. And he's like, man, what? Well, so you could, you could lock me up. He like just buried me in the ocean, you know what I mean, with my ancestors because they knew that death is better than bondage. That was heavy to me, you know what I mean. It, was, it really did hit you. That part I was like, whoa, that they was, really. That was powerful, you know. So and just the whole idea, so many layers to that movie. It reminded me, and and not in aesthetic at all, but just in dynamic. It reminded me of Get Out. Where you could watch it on the surface and just see what's going on on the surface, but it's a lot of mess. Of, of, it's a lot layers. of mess. It's layers to that yeah. movie, bro. Even Michael B. Jordan character, it remind it like. Did you see yourself? What? Of course I. Cause did. that's you. I mean, man, listen, that's, that's why you. That's why it affected me like that because I'm like, damn, you know, whoever wrote this, and I, obviously we know who wrote it, but I'm like, this dude, man, you know, he he, he spoke to some real shit because my dad is from Africa. But I was raised in South Central LA. And you know, I was turned cold. BT 
to be honest i adapted to the culture i didn't naturally that's not who i am naturally the culture of gang banging in la that's not none of us grow up as kids we come from nurturing but there's a lack of that in the coldness you get from going outside and having to survive you get in survival mode so when i seen the character i don't know i forgot his name michael b jordan character though um killmonger, uh, killmonger. killmonger. eric killmonger yeah and then i seen the story when they start getting into what happened and why he turned like that and even his his lines and how how passionate he was about i remember it was a line saying like he's like yeah i, I um I, I know the I know the game of my oppressors or something. He said, "I'm, I'm hip to my op the oppressors' game," and then the other dude was like, "Nah, man, you 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 took it and you using it against your own people, you're using the same game that they use on you against your own people." That's so real. And, you know what I'm I mean, saying? That's what gang banging. Is. That's what gang banging is. And I, you know, I had a convo. I was it's crazy. I was sitting next to Michael Eric Dyson on the on the airplane on a random on the way to New York. I was just telling him, and I'm gonna be honest and speak blunt. I'm like, you know what, man. As a gangbanger, right, when you go on a mission, you might, when you're looking for your so-called enemy, you're driving through a different hood, down the street. You know, it's an invisible line. You cross this street, now you're in another hood. And you hunting. And when you're looking, you, you're going to pass up the dude that's dressed square, right? You're going to pass up a dude from a different race. When you see somebody that's dressed like you dress and got the walk like you got and got the, the body language like you, you gonna say there you go, get him, and that's deep. Whew. You know what I'm saying? When you really unpack that, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? You looking for yourself just on the other side of town, and you gonna hop out and, and, and attack him and, and try to down him in a real way. And being caught up in, in gang banging culture, you don't think that deep. You just think of these niggas came through and shot the hood up. We about to go back through there and, and return the favor. But as you really mature as I matured and, and you know became exposed to other opportunities and embraced them I had to be honest with myself I start being honest and thinking about it like damn you know just the selection process the way that you select who your target is gonna be that's something to think about as far as the energy a beautiful energy you know you know Nori posted up something he said uh, most of your enemies is somebody you once helped and it's sad, but it's true. Most of the people I ever consider enemies are people I fell out with after I helped them. You know, and I always say, we come in this world by ourselves, butt naked. No plan, we don't know what we gonna do. And then once you get in a position of strength and power, you try to uplift your people and bring them with you and give jobs to your people or show them stuff that they would have never had any chance of seeing. And the minute you can't help them, that's the minute you ain't shit. You ain't nothing. It makes you wonder if it's worth even looking out for the, uh, the, the, the entourages or whatever you want to call that shit or the people who's your so-called friends or whatever the case may be. And um, I'm not pretending to know what happened in MC Hustle. I don't know who did that to him. I don't know. What what I do know is that he was always a positive guy, man. He was giving back to his community.